Today on the channel, the brand new Super D PWM receiver from Beta FPV. What's up guys, if you want to fly long range and you're looking for a nice receiver that has all the options and some extra options that you might not have heard about yet, this is a brand new 915 megahertz or 2.4 gigahertz PWM receiver that you can do up to 14 channels on for servos plugging directly in. Now, why is that important? Well, with our FPV planes, that's really what we need. They also support S bus out on here as well, uh, which is kind of different for uh, any of the ELRS receivers out there. So if you want to combine all your signals into one, now you can do that. It also supports an S bus out on here and it does have LED support and it has USB updates and Wi-Fi updates on here as well. And we have two extra long diversity antennas on this guy, so you can get the maximum uh, range out of this. I know you guys are gonna ask me, what's the range on it? We, we don't know yet, we haven't tested that, but uh, we're gonna take a look at this on the bench a little bit closer up, and I'm gonna share with you why I've been waiting for this one for quite some time. I'm super excited that it's here, and I've been using the other version, the smaller version of this, which I'll show you as well. Uh, might be a little more plug and play for you, but this one pretty much is like the Cadillac of long range ELRS receivers that you can put on your FPV airplane. Let's check it out. Okay guys, let's just jump right into this overview and review of this receiver. Now, this is truly the first 14 channel ELRS PWM Diversity RX. Uh, that's pretty awesome. So uh, Beta FPV, I gotta give it to you for releasing this. The FPV plane and the fixed wing community loves this. Uh, this is super great. Now it also has some other things on here that are kind of new to ELRS receiver market and, and that's gonna be the S bus option. So uh, I'm super excited that it does have an S bus port here for plugging in S bus to your flight controller. So if we wanna run this that way, we can do that. We can also do CRSF and we can also do ELRS and PWM on all of these pins here. So uh, it has a ton of pins up to 14 channels. It has 13 and 14 on the VVAT side of things. It also has an LED here for status and it kind of gives you a rainbow of different colors there. Um, they are in the manual on how to tell what the status is, uh, but binding this up is not super hard as well. So you can go into um, your radio and you can bind it up there. And the way to get this into bind status, if most people don't know about that yet, for this receiver, it's powering on and off your aircraft three times in a row, uh, waiting a couple seconds and then you'll see it start to flash. Once you see it start to flash, then you can go into your radio uh, or your ELRS software and activate the bind process. Uh, and when it goes solid, obviously it's going to be bound and you should be good to go for it configuring it in your flight controller um, inside iNav. So that's that's mostly what we're gonna be using this for, but it's cool that it has 14 channels on here because if you're flying long range, a lot of us add different modules on and you have a lot of room to do that now. That's, that's pretty cool. It will drive up to 14 servos on this receiver, which is kind of crazy. Um, it does have an external sensor for a barometer, current sensor is also supported on here. And again, it is true diversity and you wanna split these antennas. They recommend it having about 90 degrees of space and also bringing them vertical for the best uh, receive back to your TX. So um, that's kind of cool. But what I also thought was pretty neat about this one is that for long range, one of the gremlins of long range is actually things overheating. And this has a built-in TCXO uh, temperature compensation crystal oscillator inside this receiver, which is super, super nice. Um, that way, if your module is starting, it'll it'll regulate the temperature, which is, is really cool. So it's a super accurate, um, and, it can, and it can withstand extreme temperatures. And with the way the world's heating up right now, that's a good thing for you. So um, I have had receivers overheat and long range and they and will go back into fail safe if you lose signal. Um, and once it cools off, it'll come back, but you're gonna be in return to home while that happens. So um, keep that in mind. It's always good to have a diversity receiver set up if you're flying long range uh, with a fixed wing or even with um, a quadcopter. Um, some of the 
the best setups out there have dual receiver setups. You can also do dual, dual, dual cam setups as well, um, which is kind of cool. So you can do analog and you can do an HD setup and you can switch between the two on a switch on your transmitter. Uh, iNav does support that. But today, um, what also kind of makes me excited about this one too, is it does support USB-C side of things and it has built-in Wi-Fi. So you can open up the app and make configuration changes inside the app. Uh, via Wi-Fi without having to hook it straight up to your computer, which is kind of cool. And this little receiver does have three different protocol um, that you can get on that 2.4. You can get 915 spectrum and 868 megahertz as well. I, if you're going to ask me, I would choose the 915 for long range. If you're going to put this on a quadcopter, you could do 2.4. Um, and I, I actually have the uh, 2.4 module so that's probably the one that i'm going to use and it also shipped to me this is a prototype uh, but mine did come with elrs version 3.30 on here so um, painless 360 also did mention that he was having a problem getting the s bus to be seen um, and it was an extremely complicated process to be able to to make that work so i, I have a swordfish that i was going to hook this up to as far as that flight controller with this s bus option right here but i'm not even going to try it right now because i, I don't want to spend a couple hours trying to figure this out and once they update elrs version 3.30 maybe they'll fix that hopefully uh, but we're going to have to wait on that to for a, a true s bus uh, experience on this and that's kind of a bummer for me but this again this is a prototype one and hopefully the one you get will have an updated version on there so that SBUS is indeed working um, and they also have these connectors inside here they are IPEX connectors uh, very similar to Crossfire inside but you get this awesome uh, durable case on the exterior of this receiver too. We could open this up and you'll see all the goodies inside, but um, today we're just gonna talk about the basics of this receiver. And uh, what, I mean, what I like about it so far is that several different versions of this receiver that we can use as well. So um, we have the micro version and they also make the Super P. Um, if, you, if you want the Super D, that one is gonna be probably your best range if you're looking for range. Um, so, and just to give you a size and scale comparison, look at this, this is the little tiny micro RX from Beta FPV. And I've used these for quite some time. They are um, pretty, pretty nice and, and portable. And I would use these on something like the smaller uh, planes, like the Zod Drift. This is a great receiver for the Zod Drift, which um, I have in my last review, I used this receiver for the Zod Drift. Now, if I'm going to use a large receiver like this, it's probably going to be on a plane, something like the Swordfish or something as large as like a My Twin Dream or uh, those larger FPV fixed wing planes. And again, you could bind this up on any type of fixed wing, RC boat, car, or quadcopter. Now, this little LED up here, it is kind of a rainbow type of LED, meaning it will change colors. Uh, it has a it actually will change colors over and over like a fade effect when it powers on. If it powers on green, it'll give you kind of a, a slow flash and that's the Wi-Fi upgrading mode. Red, if it's a quick flash, that means that there's no RF chip detected. Orange, a double flash, it's, it's putting it into bind mode. And if you have a triple flash that's connected but it's mismatched from the model configuration, so um, look out for that one. And if it does a slow flash, it's just way waiting for a connection. And when you see a solid on LED, that means that you're connected and it indicates that you're getting packets. And again, if you wanna put this little guy into bind mode, power on your quad or your fixed wing three different times, wait a couple seconds, and it's gonna start to flash super fast with the orange. Um, it's gonna flash twice, boom, 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 boom. And then it's gonna be into binding mode. Then you can go inside your radio and you can bind it up in your ELRS configurator. And you also get some extra cables in here. You get one for the CRSF out as well as your S bus out right there with this or G. H. And they also give you a Y cable in here. And no, that's not actually for your ailerons. Um, you might think this is for your aileron splitter, but this is actually a Y cable for um, to avoid the power port being occupied by the power plug. So one end of the cable connects to the servo while the other end connects to the power source. 
um, that, that's going to help people out when they're trying to get their servos configured. Now, if you want to um, check out more information, I'll try to put the, the manual to this particular receiver in the video description as well as um, the link to this receiver. So this receiver, it cost about $29, but I think for the options that they're giving us, 2.4G, 915 and 868 megahertz uh, for around $30 and 14 channels. That's that's a that's a pretty good deal uh, for a super long range module and you know range is going to be tested with these um, there's some guys out there performing range tests but you know with this channel I can't be the one to do that but I'm also super excited that it does have a built-in uh, TCXO oscillator in there as well for temperature control because this summer is it's, good. it's already super hot out there and uh, it, it's not good when your receiver overheats can happen they do overheat so uh, if you're ever flying fixed wing that is a, that is a problem if they're inside the fuselage a lot of time big tip for long range guys that are just getting into this on fixed wing is put this receiver on the outside of the fuselage uh, just to give it a little more airflow uh, I, I have done that on quite a few fixed wings and uh, it does help so um, keep that temperature down and you should be good but with this one it's not such a big deal because we do have some temperature regulation in there so I appreciate you guys watching my channel for more information on FPV fixed wing and quadcopters please do subscribe and I will see you on the next one guys take care